leaders of the peace movement and 9-11 truth movement issued a document called the Kenny Bunkport Warning. It came out of a meeting of uh, peace movement leaders and 9-11 truth movement uh, people who had gathered at the edge of the Bush family compound in Kenny Bunkport, Maine for a strategy session. And the Kenny Bunkport Warning, you can see it on the internet at actindependent.org. That would be actindependent.org, along with other documentation, was simply a warning that the Cheney faction was obviously preparing to make a move against Iran, possibly in terms of a nuclear attack, but also conventional was possible. Usually an air attack was the, the likely scenario. And that it was almost certain that a Cheney would attempt to cover this and again, by Cheney, I mean the faction, not this individual, uh, that the Cheney faction would try to cover the attack on Iran, either with a new 9-11 incident or with a, with a new Gulf of Tonkin. The Gulf of Tonkin, of course, was the August 1964 fake event where the U.S. accused North Vietnam of firing on some U.S. ships in November of 2005. Uh, the U.S. government admitted that that had been a fake, and they tried to blame low- to middle-level officials who were covering up for their own malfeasance. So the Gulf of Tonkin was a fake. Too bad if you died in the Vietnam War. Vietnam, of course, is one thing. 9-11 uh, is the great war provocation of, of recent years coming out of the U.S. intelligence community, as everybody by now should know. What Cheney has been thinking about is a new 9-11 on a, on a wider scale, a super 9-11, which would be conducted quite possibly with nuclear weapons. Cheney has said now several times this year that his nightmare is a terrorist attack carried out no longer by terrorists with box cutters and airline tickets, but rather with a nuclear weapon in a U.S. city. So that the Cheney doctrine, as we've known it for the last two to three years, is essentially terrorist act in the United States, blamed on Iran, attack on Iran, and then the option of some kind of martial law uh, or state of emergency inside the United States. So we essentially, in very succinct sentences, warned that this was the issue. And the way you respond to that inside the U.S. is the immediate impeachment of Cheney for the purposes of war avoidance. In other words, not just impeach him for what he's done already, but for what he's planning to do. Keep his finger away from the nuclear button. Uh, because once he's been impeached, it's easier for the loyal patriotic military officers, and there still are some, or simply officers who don't want to die in Iran, that's fine too, uh, to say no and to reject these illegal orders coming from these neocons. And that we have to tell people tell world public opinion that if weapons of mass destruction in a terrorist format go off anywhere in the world, you must not think that this comes from Al-Qaeda, Bin Laden, or any of this idiotic mythology, nor from Hezbollah or anybody else like this, but rather from Cheney, because he's the one who needs it. If you ask yourself who benefits, Cheney benefits from terrorism. He needs it like he needs air to breathe. So that was the Kenny Bunkford warning. And as an intelligence document, it actually turned out to be rather accurate because uh, this was posted on the Internet late in the evening on the uh, 25th of August, uh, Eastern Time, New York Time. Uh, and it was therefore up on the 26th, the 27th, and the 28th. On the 29th, a B-52 Intercontinental Strategic Bomber was loaded at Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, with six nuclear cruise missiles, each one packing up to... 150 kilotons, which means six or seven times the Hiroshima device. And uh, on the following day, August 30th, these were flown across the United States to Barksdale, Louisiana, which is traditionally, operatively, the jumping off point for air attacks into the Middle East. So we can imagine a B-52 bombing run that could be simply uh, a round trip in the air go to the Middle East, use these standoff cruise missiles that adds an extra two or 3,000 miles to your reach, and then with mid-air refueling, fly back to the United States. Quite possible. So these cruise missiles were very likely intended for a nuclear sneak attack on Iran. And we know from what the Israelis did later, on September 6th, they did attack with Air Force uh, planes 
into Syria and possibly they were intending to get to Iran. Now, the B-52 story, I think, is a huge uh, issue. Again, the plane was loaded on the 29th. It got to Barksdale on the 30th, and there it was stopped. And this, I think, is the great story of our time. How was it stopped? Well, for some reason, three days after the Kenny Bunkport warning went up, a group of Air Force officers and others apparently said no. They rejected the illegal order. They did not want to become Nuremberg criminals or war criminals by carrying this out, and they stopped the plane. Uh, there's then a period from uh, August 30th to September 5th when we're not really sure what happened, but on September 5th, the Air Force announced that they had committed what they described themselves as the greatest security breach and management failure in the history of the United States Air Force, which means about 60 years, six decades of U.S. Air Force. This was the worst thing they had ever done. This was an unacceptable mistake and a clear deviation from our exacting standards. We hold ourselves accountable to the American people and want to ensure proper corrective action has been taken. As you know, when the incident occurred, we immediately established that there was never an unsafe condition and reported it to our national leadership, including the Secretary of Defense as well as the President. At the same time, we promised the American public we would conduct a thorough investigation and present the findings of the investigation to our leadership, to our elected leaders, and to you, the public. For the countless times our dedicated airmen have transferred weapons in our nation's arsenal, nothing like this has ever occurred. This was a failure to follow procedures, procedures which have proven to be sound. It involved a limited number of airmen at two bases. Our extensive six-week investigation found that this was an isolated incident and that the weapons never left the custody of airmen, were never unsecured. But clearly this incident is unacceptable to the people of the United States and to the United States Air Force. We owe the nation nothing less than adherence to the highest standards. In addition, our investigation found that there has been an erosion of adherence to weapons handling standards at Minot Air Force Base and at Barksdale Air Force Base. We have acted quickly and decisively to rectify this. You're not supposed to fly nuclear weapons. There's a bilateral agreement with Russia. You don't fly nuclear weapons, neither side. There's also Air Force regulations. They say you don't fly nuclear weapons except under extraordinary circumstances. All of those safeguards had broken down. So the plane came to a halt. Now this, this has been in the Washington Post, a big story on September 23rd, Sunday, big picture, above the fold. Normally that would trigger a congressional investigation. There is no congressional investigation, and that is a huge scandal. So a lot of us have been agitating, and I think I've been joined now by uh, David Lindorf, who's a well-known writer on impeachment, and a couple of people on the Chosudovsky website, always a good place to go, Global Research of Canada. They're interested in the topic, and others are getting interested in this topic, and I think we're going we're gonna to keep pushing, that's for sure. The two other aspects of it that I would stress, one is that six airmen, six Air Force personnel, are dead from... Binot to Barksdale, over a period from July, but especially September, you get six people killed under circumstances which I think have not been sufficiently clarified. And this would include a captain, who is apparently a B-52 pilot, a lieutenant, who is a B-52 pilot, an airman called Airman Blue, who is a part of the security detail, and a couple of other people uh, killed generally in uh, automobile accidents. Uh, so uh, think of the, again, the grassy knoll phenomenon on the Kennedy assassination, right? that people are somehow part of something important tend to have a very limited lifespan. So th there's a huge scandal about this. And the most uh, important uh, aspect of concern, Wayne Madsen, the person I know in Washington, he has wonderful contacts in the National Security Agency, has said on September 24th that one of the cruise missiles is still missing. And that would mean that one cruise missile is still missing on the 24th, 10 days after 
the United States Air Force conducted a complete stand down. This was on September 14th. They suspended all operations worldwide for a review of security procedures, and I'm sure also to cover up what had happened. And there is a cover up in action. Five or six officers have been simply fired from the Air Force. We're not sure exactly who they are, at least I'm not at this point. 60 to 70 personnel have been punished. They've been reprimanded or somehow have taken away some negative result for their, their careers. But this is not enough. We've got to have a high profile congressional investigation because my own thesis would be the people who brought you the rogue nuclear B-52 with the option of striking Iran or maybe that extra weapon that's missing is going to go off in the U.S. Maybe it will go off in Cincinnati or Portland or St. Louis. That is the Cheney Doctrine, and you, can't, uh, you cannot assume anything with a, a, a desperado of, of this type. Um, you have to think about it. A, a cruise missile fired, say, at night into a city would be noticed by nobody. It's silent, it's stealthy, it's going to come in. And of course, they'd make sure that they had plenty of patsies running around. I can imagine patsies with um, luggage monogrammed Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda, right? A special line of Louis Vuitton. It's just Al-Qaeda luggage. And that, that we'd find that for sure, right? You'd find charred suitcases saying Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda. Then the neocons would immediately come out and say, there it is, there's the proof. It was a suitcase bomb brought in by Al-Qaeda, whereas in reality it might have been this cruise missile. So that's the kind of scenario that Cheney is undoubtedly contemplating at this point. Uh, if I were here in Britain, I would immediately demand the U.S. ambassador come to the Foreign Office and give explanations. What is this rogue B-52 story? What are the facts? Where is that extra missile? Why were these six people found dead? Or why were they? Why have they been uh, uh, not investigated? Isn't there a pattern in those traffic accidents killing six people? That's a very high mortality rate for two Air Force bases over a period of two or three months. 